Coming up, round four of the high school football playoffs. Regional championships are settled among UIL teams, while the private schools play for their state finals. We've got highlights, plus siblings everywhere on this team, on the field and the sidelines. We'll have that story, and we're talking hoops with the head coach from Waxahachie. This is the Chevy High School Sports Special, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers. Chevy drives Texas. Postseason play continues. The number of teams continues to get smaller, but the games keep getting bigger. Hello again, everyone. I'm Joe Trahan. UIL playoffs reached their state quarterfinals this week, also known as the regional finals, where the top representatives from every classification and every region are decided. In Class 6A Division I, the Region 1 final comes down to Southlake Carroll and Duncanville playing at the Star in Frisco. Scoreless in the first quarter until Duncanville quarterback Jaquindon Jackson starts to throw, and then he runs. He'll score from 15 yards out, and Duncanville leads 7-zip after the first quarter. Jackson scored again in the second quarter to make it 14-0. Then the Panthers' defense puts up points when Anthony Cruz gets the interception and he returns it for a touchdown. Duncanville up 20-0 at that point. Still in the second quarter, after Carroll makes it 20-7, Jaquinda Jackson throws for another Duncanville touchdown to Roderick Daniels Jr. Duncanville handing Southlake Carroll their worst playoff loss ever. 51-7 the final as the Dragon season ends in the regional finals, just like last year. The 6A Div Division I Region II Championship saw Allen travel to Waco to play midway. First quarter, Allen scores on its second possession. That's Grant Tisdale going seven yards of the quarterback keeper for a seven-zip Eagles lead. They were loving it. It was 10-0 at the half before Tisdale runs for another touchdown in the third quarter, then throws two more, both to Theo Weiss, and suddenly Allen's lead grows to 30-0. And you know what? They weren't done either. Still in the third quarter, Tisdale pitches to Jawan Mason on the reverse. And here comes Mason on his way for a 26-yard touchdown. And we're still in the third quarter when Allen's Cornelius Williams picks off the Waco Midway quarterback and check out the return. Williams will take it back 85 yards to cap a 34-point quarter. 51-7 is the final in this one, too as Allen advances to the state semifinals where they will face Duncanville. 6A Division II now, the Region 1 championship taking place in Lubbock where they had snow. Haltom meeting Amarillo Tuscosa there, tied at 14 in the second quarter, and Haltom has the ball. Quarterback Michael Black to DeCorian Mitchell. Big gain down inside the five-yard line. That would lead to a Haltom score. Michael Black running it in for the Buffaloes, and they take a 20-14 lead at that point. Tuscosa retakes the lead by halftime. It's a one-point game at the half, but Tuscosa pretty much takes over after that. They outscore Halt of 27-7 in the third and fourth quarters, including the fumble return for a touchdown, and Haltom's best season ever comes to an end. Great job, guys. 48-27, the final in this one, though. Class 5A Division I now. Highland Park taking on Tyler John Tyler in the Region 2 final. Highland Park down 21 in the fourth with about 10 minutes left to play when Chandler Morris finds Benner Page for the score. John Tyler still leads by 14. Two minutes later, Morris again, this time to Bennett Brown. For a 28-yard touchdown, Highland Park pulls with its seven. It's 35-28. Three minutes left to go now. Morris takes it himself this time. So in the span of seven minutes, the Scots erase a 21-point deficit. We're tied at 35, and they weren't done. 11 seconds left. Morris scores again for Highland Park. What a comeback for the Scots. HP beats JT. 42-35, the final there. And district rivals, Denton Ryan and Birdville, playing for the Region 1 Championship in 5A Division 1. Third game of a triple header at the Star Friday. First quarter, second and long. When Ryan quarterback Seth Hennigan throws deep to Drew Sanders. Big gain for the first down for Ryan at the 13-yard line. Let's take you two plays later from the 10. Amani Bailey runs it in for the first score of the game, and the Raiders led 7-0. Ryan's defense has been incredible all season, and they make a play here as Ahmad Terry strips the ball from Birdville's quarterback, and Terry makes the recovery as well. 
He gets the strip sack and the fumble recovered. Next play for Ryan Hennigan. Throws to Kiori Hicks for the 25-yard touchdown. 14-0 at that point. Plenty for the Raiders in a shutout. 28-0 the final. And Denton Ryan moves on to play Highland Park in the 5A Division I semifinals for the third year in a row. 5A Division II now. Battle of unbeatens between Alito and Frisco Reedy. Reedy takes a 3-0 lead in the second quarter, but Alito answers that with a touchdown by Jace McClellan. 43 yards on the run, and the Bearcats take a 7-3 lead. Still in the second, McClellan again. The Oklahoma commit with another long run, breaking tackles along the way for a gain of 49 yards. He would finish off the drive with a one-yard plunge. McClellan ends up scoring three times, including a five-yard run in the third quarter. Alito advances to the state semifinals with a 26-16 win over Reedy. Well, you know, in team sports, the word family is used a lot, and the bonds among teammates are undeniably strong. That's no different at Dallas Bishop Dunn High School. Actually, it is different, quite different. Mike Leslie has more in this week's Spotlight, presented by Texas Scottish Rite Hospital for Children. Family is something that is important when you have that brotherhood. That's the things that our program has been based on since day one. Football coaches talking about brotherhood and family is nothing new. But for Bishop Dunn, it's literal. Falcons head coach Michael Johnson coaches with four of his brothers, which means five different guys answering to Coach Johnson. The first couple of years we all turned around, but now when the kids see it, we sort of know who they're looking for. He might be Coach Johnson. I might be, hey, Coach Johnson. And so it's it's a difference. It's a so tone. we it's a tone in the way they go about it. And that brotherhood extends beyond the coaching staff as well. On the varsity roster, five different sets of brothers, including two sets of twins. That represents nearly a quarter of the team. It feels like the big family. Like it's like every time we're on the field, it's like a family reunion or something. And that literal brother. Brotherhood filters through the team in a figurative sense. The bond I have with him is the bond I have with the rest of my teammates. You know, we all play for each other and we all reach our goals together. Those that perhaps don't have a brother, they see how brothers interact with each other. They see how brothers stand up for each other. And so it's modeled. That older brother who takes care of that younger brother, then you see that senior taking care of that freshman. Everybody has a home to go to. They have different experiences at home, but when you come to the football team, y'all all have the same thing in mind. You know, y'all all work towards the same goal. So, be nice people to work for one goal. That one goal, a state title. And it's within their reach Friday night. Mike Leslie, Channel 8 Sports, Dallas. Thanks, Mike, what a cool story there. Bishop Dunn taking their family affair all the way to state this season. TAPS championships were decided this weekend, and we'll tell you how the Falcons and everyone else did. More highlights still to come, and we're talking volleyball with the TAPS 2A champs from Ovilla Christian Academy. That's next on the Chevy High School Sports Special. Welcome back to the Chevy High School Sports Special. Still a couple of weeks to go in the high school football playoffs for UIL teams, but for the Texas Association of Private Parochial Schools, it's over. Their state championships were held this weekend. Let's start out in Division I, where it's Bishop Lynch and Bishop Dunn doing battle. This one is scoreless in the second. Dunn, Simeon Evans hooks up with Andrew Armstrong. He's in the end zone for six, and it's a seven-zip lead for the Falcons. All right, let's go to the fourth quarter now. Lynch down seven to three, trying to take the lead. Charles Crawford takes it in from a couple of yards out. Bishop Lynch up nine seven after the missed extra point. Less than a minute to go now. Bishop Dunn with the ball. Evans links up with Armstrong again for the go ahead score, and that is a done deal. Falcons hang on to win 13 to nine, and they are your TAPS D1 champs. In Division Two, Trinity Christian Academy, Cedar Hill squaring off with Austin Regents. TCA already running away with this one in the second, and Shador Sanders adds to that. Off the reverse, he airs it out to Dwight McLaughlin. That makes it 28 to two, it's a 65 yard strike. Regents would show some life in the fourth, but Jalen Reed jars the ball loose, and Jamarvin Hartfield scoops and scores. TCA Cedar Hill with the TAPS D2 title, 49-24 the final there. 
In Division Three, it's Trinity Christian Academy Willow Park taking on Bernie Geneva with this title on the line. And it's a great start for the Eagles of Bernie Geneva. Devin Ahearns gets the quick toss. He does the rest, juking out defenders and working his way down the sideline for a 46-yard touchdown. They add another score in the second as Ahearns plunges in from one yard out, and it's 14-0. But three field goals have Willow Park within striking distance and Tito Gabaldon gets in to give them the one point lead with 30 seconds left and the defense would hold and TCA Willow Park gets the 15 14 victory and they are your division three state champs and division four action. Fort Worth Lake Country Christian taking on Shiner St. Paul and Lake Country Christian gets off to a hot start. They're already up seven zip. That's when Kobe Haynes takes it 59 yards for the touchdown and the lead grows to 14 nothing. St. Paul would rally though. Joseph Natal rushes in to cut the deficit to 14 to 12. St. Paul would kick a field goal to go up 15 14 at the half. And after going up 22-14 in the third, St. Paul will put this one out of reach with a touchdown pass right here, and they take home the championship with a 29-22 victory. TAPS Volleyball Championships were decided last month, and one of the big winners, Ovilla Christian School. They captured the 2A championship. What a season for the Eagles, and we've got the team joining us here in studio tonight, head coach Robin Johnson and the crew. Ladies, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having us. All right, Coach Johnson, let's start with you. Uh, obviously, your young ladies have championship DNA in their character, but I'm curious, tell me what this bunch is like. How would you characterize this championship group? Um, the first word that comes to mind would be competitive. Um, I saw that early on, and we just kind of rode with it. Uh, another, another word to describe this group is fun. Um, they have a lot of fun. We care about each other. Uh, we believe in each other. We believe in the Lord. And um, I just think it's a, it's a great team. I mean, uh, it showed throughout the season. We had some adversities, and we just kind of stuck with it. And it, uh, in the end, we played on that last weekend of the season and brought back a state championship. Yeah, you know, that faith and belief so important to get over some of those hurdles, and you guys certainly did a fantastic job of that. So let's meet some of the players this year. First up is Delaney Case. She's a senior. She plays in the middle. She's all around awesome from what her teammates tell me. So Delaney, let's start with you and start with your team motto, Unfinished Business. Tell me what it means and where it comes from. Yeah, so Unfinished Business started last year during ba basketball season and uh, when we made it to the final four in the uh, season in volleyball we made it to the regional game and lost to a team that we had already beat multiple times in the season and it really just left a bad taste in our mouth so this summer getting in the gym preparing for the upcoming volleyball season we were really just trying to work hard because we knew that <clears throat> we had the opportunity to go win the state championship all right, let's meet some more of the team, shall we? Up next is Trinity Morales. She is a senior and she's a setter. And Trinity, I understand that because of what happened with the basketball team and last year's volleyball team, that when you guys got to preseason camp, you kind of felt something and you kind of knew something in terms of this being possibly and perhaps a special season. Tell me what that preseason camp was like. Uh, yeah, well, whenever we started our camp during the summer, we had some new girls come in and we had heard some stuff about them, how they were pretty good. And so we had a lot of hope for the season. Um, obviously after our first couple games and we started really gelling with each other, it was kind of evident that we were gonna have a really fun season on our hands and that um, I knew that we really wanted it a lot more just because of the previous seasons and just to see like everyone's um, fire and like the practices and stuff, you just, I knew that. I think everyone knew that we were gonna have a really great season. Up next, we want to meet Faith Reynolds. She's a senior. She plays uh, the libero position. Um, and another theme for you guys, from what I understand, was the ability to come together. Um, Faith mentioned before we came on air that there are a lot of different personalities in this group, but you were able to unite and find that common ground. Tell me what that common ground was and how you guys were able to do it. Um, well, for me being new this year, I think hearing about how we lost last year kind of just helped um, motivate us to like work harder. And I think just like I mentioned earlier, um, the diversity. 
All right, let's meet one more member of our championship team. It's Audrey Nunes. She's a sophomore outside hitter. And Audrey, from hearing your story, I mean, it's great stuff, right? You, you've, you reach this hardship, you overcome the hardship, and you become a champion. So I want you to take me to that moment, the last point, when that game was over and you guys were crowned champions. What did it feel like and what did it mean to you and your teammates? It was incredible. God really blessed us with an amazing team and teammates here. Um, and just to be able to be on the court when OCS won their first volleyball state championship is something I will never forget. I remember when um, Molly Surd and the last girl shanked that ball, we all went crazy and the fans that we had, shout out to the Eagles Nest for coming to every game to support us. Y'all really meant a lot. And I think the energy that was felt is something that we need to feel every game and it's just incredible. And coach, let me close with you. So we got all this positivity. It's been fantastic. And for, from what I can understand, you might have a pretty good team coming back next year. What are the prospects for next season? Um, I'm trying not to be cocky here, but <laughs> I'm really excited about it. Um, we are graduating some seniors, but we have uh, the bulk of our team coming back. We have um, some sophomores that are going to be juniors. Our, we have the two-time uh, district MVP coming back and Tessa Henry. Um, we have uh, first teamers coming back, uh, Audrey Nunes. Um, we have uh, our setter, Molly, coming back. And we have some young girls that uh, did not play a lot uh, d throughout the season, but are strong players that we look at and they're going to come in and help us next year. So, I mean, to be honest with you, we're going to make another run. All right, there you go. You heard it from Coach Johnson. By the way, Coach, congrats in her second year as head volleyball coach. They get it done with a state championship. Ladies, y'all did a fantastic job. Thanks for bringing your energy and your light to the set tonight. You guys did a great job. Thanks again for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. All right, more football highlights are on the way next. Plus, we'll tell you about a big basketball showcase coming to Waxahachie. Indians head coach Greg Gober joins me for that. Coming up next, keep it here, folks. It is the Chevy high school sports special. For a Division I Region II championship between Argyle and Waco La Vega Friday in the rain. After Argyle muffed a punt in the first quarter, La Vega scores on the very next play. John Richards takes the handoff, and boy, does he ever know what to do. 41 yards for the touchdown. That gives the Pirates a 7 nothing lead. It's 10 nothing after one quarter, then in the second, Richards scores again for La Vega. This time it's a two-yard run. The guy's got speed and power. La Vega leads 17 nothing. Turnovers and drop passes plaguing Argyle most of the night, but not here. Brandon White making the one-handed grab of the end zone. That's a nice catch, and it gets the Eagles within 10 in the third quarter. But in the fourth, guess who? John Richards puts it away for La Vega, scoring his third TD of the night. 31-14 the final as La Vega eliminates Argyle. What a year for Decatur after starting one and four. The Eagles playing in the regional finals against Hereford. Early on, Roman Fuller finds Dane Chapman along the sideline for the first down after the big game. A few plays later, Eagles running back A.J. Martinez punches it in, and it's 7-0 to Cater with nine minutes to go in the first quarter. Eagles get the ball back after stopping Herford's first drive, and Fuller finds Chapman again for another big game for, yes, another first down. That leads to another Decatur TD just a few plays later. Gunnar Ragsdale makes it 14-0 Eagles. Later, Herford ball. Then Leighton Harris gets the INT for Decatur, and he'll return it to the five-yard line to set up another score to make it 21-0. And Decatur rides that early momentum to another win, 38-28 the final. Decatur moves on to face Waco La Vega in the state semifinals. As the high school football playoffs wind down, the high school basketball season is just getting rolling. The DFW area is full of great teams and great players, and a lot of them are headed to Waxahachie this week, along with some of the top talent from around the country. The ARS Rescue Rooter National Hoop Fest is coming to Waxahachie's brand new gym this Friday and Saturday. And Indians basketball coach Greg Gober joins me now to talk about it. Coach, first of all, thanks so much for being on the show. Hey, Joe, I really appreciate you having me on and giving us this opportunity. Well, I got to tell you, this is one of those really cool deals where 
you know, it's going to be a great spotlight shined in our community right there at Waxahachie. Now, this used to be the Penny Hardaway Classic, started a couple years ago, back in 2016. Tell me about the National Hoop Fest and what will be coming to your new gym. Well, we're, we're fortunate. We're going to have uh, five of the top teams in the nation coming out there, probably 50 of some of the top players in the nation as well. And they're going to get to come to Waxahachie, represent the DFW area, and five of the teams in DFW are going to get to play these guys and not only just you know see them on social media or read about them or hear about them they're going to get to witness them in person and up close and personal and be there with them. And this really is a, a select opportunity because this uh, this hoop fest actually goes on in four cities across the country right coach? Oh we're incredibly blessed to have this opportunity and uh, we want to put our best foot forward and, and just make sure that you know DFW is represented in the right way not only the way that we compete with them but it's w the hospitality that we show these guys coming in. The other cool thing about this is the fact that some of the same players that you will see in Waxahachie's gym, you will also see eventually in the NBA. It is just literally a matter of time. So let's talk about some of those top national players who will be in your gym uh, over the weekend. Well, it's just there's so many to mention. It's hard. You're going to leave a lot of people out, but you've got Armando Baycott, a kid from IMG that plays the five position that's just uh, incredible. IMG's got uh, Jeremiah Robinson, Josh Green. They've got eight of the top guys in the top 100 of ESPN. And then you just go from team to team. It's unbelievable. Uh, the guys that are going to be there. Uh, Sunrise Christian, Malik Hall, Latravion Jackson, Nafali Dante. All these guys are incredible. Um, you just, you know, it just goes from the national set. It's, it's just, it just can't get any better. We're going to play IMG and we're also going to play Huntington Prep. And Huntington Prep's got a, a guy named Jamin Brakefield who they, they just term as a beast. He's just incredible. He's a beast on, on the floor. When you talk about, you know, this, this, the top talent, the players you mentioned, and you also have all these great teams coming in. You mentioned IMG and, and the other team that you guys will be playing. Can you talk from a coach's perspective, like the, the level that they play upon really is the best we could see? It, it's an unbelievable level. It's going to be so far above what we're accustomed to. Mm. But what it does is just opens the door for us to see uh, what we have to do. Uh, to aspire to be at that level. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing just to somebody to tell you you're really good and then you go out and prove it against guys like this. It can, it can really uh, boost your confidence or deflate your confidence, however way you want to work it. Yeah, it, it could serve certainly as a great lesson. And then the other thing about this, I think it's great because you guys are opening a new facility. You have that brand new gym now. You get a chance to show it off, right? It's, it's a tremendous opportunity for not only just the school, the gym, but the community to, to be able to, you know, host something like this and be a part of it it's it's you know the things that it stands for is incredible all right so how do people go about getting tickets coach if they want to go Friday and Saturday they can they can get online to nationalhoopfest.com you can order them online you can buy them at the door uh, they're ten dollars for a Friday night session of two games and then they're fifteen dollars for five games on Saturday and it's not one of these deals where you pay each individual game that's for all games they can watch seven of the top mm games that are going to be played this year. On ESPN, it, it, it says that uh, three out of the top must-see basketball games this year will be in Waxahachie, Texas. And of course, we've got tons of local talent that will be showcased as well. Coach, let's talk about you know some of those teams who will uh, be holding up the banner for us locally as well. Well, it'll start off with Denton Geyer. You'll have Davian Harmon. You'll have Jalen Wilson. Um, you, you'll have all kinds of guys coming in from there. Then you also have, for J.J. Pierce out of Richardson, Drew Timmy, who's going to be going to Gonzaga. Uh, you know, when I said... Davian Harmon, he's going to Oklahoma, and Jalen Wilson, Michigan, those are big time commitment players. Langster, you have Mike Miles, uh, you also have Wade Taylor. Uh, it just goes down the list, walks ahead you, you'll have CJ Nolan, JT Warren. Um, when, we, when we get into DeSoto, just uh, such a, a amount of players that'll be for them, it's just so many to mention, you, you just can't say one. There you go. That's how they like to do it, Indian style. That should be a lot of fun. Uh, Waxahachie will be the host, nationalhoopfest.com, if you'd like to get tickets. Coach, thanks so much for being on the show tonight. We appreciate you. Thank you very much, Joe. All right, good luck with the season. The team of the week is coming your way next, so keep it right here, folks. It's the Chevy High School Sports Special. Chevy Team of the Week, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers.
After starting the season one and four and finishing the regular season with a record of four and six, the Decatur Eagles have made the most of their postseason opportunities. On Thursday, they won their fourth round matchup against Hereford. The Eagles riding the momentum of a 21 point head start to a 38 28 win over the White Faces. Decatur advancing to the state semifinals now for the first time in 30 years. At 8 and 6, they're the 4A Division I Region 1 champs, and they're also our Chevy Team of the Week. Just two weeks of high school football remaining this week's state semifinals, deciding who will move on to play for state championships at AT&T Stadium. And we'll be right back here again next Sunday night to tell you who that will be. And thanks again to the TAPS 2A volleyball champions from Ovilla Christian School. Ladies, you did a fantastic job tonight. Of course, it was fun having them here tonight. And to all of you out there, thanks so much for spending some time, folks. I'm Joe Trahan. Good night and have a great week. This has been the Chevy High School Sports Special, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers. Chevy drives Texas.